Hey, hi friends. In my last video, we looked at SAA02, that is Solution Architect Associate, getting decommissioned on 29th. Okay. And then we looked at what are the differences. If you see here on the right hand side, these are the differences. The percentage of inclusion of questions have decreased for some and have increased for some. So in today's video, let us look at what's new in AWS Solution Architect Associate C03. Before we do that, please hit the subscribe and the like button. Subscriptions help me understand the pulse of the audience and accordingly I tailor my content. Now when people hear this news that a certain certification is getting decommissioned and a new one is taking place, its place. So people generally panic what will happen next should i go first in first few weeks to appear for the exam or should i wait for audience feedback before i go and appear so first things first when can you appear for saac03 not 02 okay 03 it is 30th august this year onwards one question people ask generally is is my saa c02 certification valid yes it is valid how long it will be valid for three years from the time you have acquired that certification so what changes now there are changes in latitude and altitude what means is there are changes with respect to the width of the coverage and the depth of the coverage for example c03 will go deep on compliance if you see some of the news articles if there are no compliance for example rbi that is our reserve bank of india they have imposed 55 lakh penalty on seva vikas cooperative bank similarly they have imposed 50 lakh penalty on central bank of india that's a that they did it in 2020 but this is what happens if you don't take compliance seriously in the cloud world one of the pain points of customers is that they are sometimes non-compliant and they are not aware of so please remember compliance is a shared responsibility between the customer and AWS. Always remember this diagram. It is a very good diagram to understand what are your responsibilities as a customer and what are AWS responsibilities. The blue ones here are your responsibilities. The orange ones here are AWS responsibilities. Basically, anything to do with infrastructure is AWS. Anything to do with hardware, storage, compute is AWS. Anything to do with IAM, like you know whom should you give that access, either a database administrator, a data scientist, and so on. So it is you who own that responsibility of giving access. To the applications so one thing is important is which services are important from a compliance standpoint and remember we are only worried about certification as i always say we are not doing phd so here are some of these services which are important so you have audit manager you have guard duty you have artifact and then you need to know a lot about data centers how the global infrastructure has been laid down now these are some of the customers in the regulatory industries like in healthcare philips financial services robinhood they are already using aws to a great extent but all the banks they have some regulatory compliance requirements uh health care providers for example, HIPAA compliance, they have to comply. So we are not limited only to these industries and these customers. Now you would be quizzed a lot on data backup encryption. Earlier, we saw very few questions in C02, but C03 would go deep in here. So one thing to remember is which services can be backed up and encrypted. This is something which 
you would be quizzed around in C03. So you have S3, EC2, DynamoDB is basically all the databases of AWS. Then you have Elastic File Systems, RDS, which is a database, Aurora, which is a database, storage gateways we use that so that uh, we can you know, integrate on-prem with aws fsx which is similar to efx but on a windows platform and document db which is also a database and then we have neptune which is also a database but of a different kind now which services are used for encryption Remember, you would be quizzed a lot on KMS because that is used to provide keys for encryption and decryption. So KMS is all about providing you keys for encryption and decryption. And this is how it integrates. Like you have EC2, EBS, etc., which are encrypted. And then the keys comes from this portion. Okay, this is a process to generate the keys. You you can sign, verify, export the data keys, and generate and verify the MAC IDs. Now, one thing you will have to remember is encryption of data should happen for the entire lifecycle, and this is what C03 will focus on. You will get a lot of questions on encryption at different levels. For example, you have a website and you are accepting payments using PCI. So you have credit card information stored. And basically, you are using CloudFront, Lambda, and so on. So what is important to do is at each and every level, your encryption should happen. It is not only at the database level, but at CloudFront, at Edge, everywhere the encryption should happen. So that is what we call encryption of data for entire life cycle. Okay? And this is a very important topic for C03. In C02, I could not see questions around this topic. They did have questions around encryption of data at rest, but I did not see encryption of data for the entire lifecycle questions around that. Okay. Now, while you are on this topic, please hit the subscribe button. Another important thing from a certification standpoint is certificate renewals for encryption in transit. You will have to go deep on publicly trusted certificates. These are your TLS certificates or SSL certificates on private PKI certificates. That is your public key infrastructure certificates and checking the renewal status automatically, importing the certificate and exporting the certificate. So these are very important topics where you will have to possess knowledge and some experience to clear C03 certification. Another change which I see is control tower. We did not get a lot of questions around control tower. In fact, I never saw anything in my certification exam. So in a nutshell, you know, in the aviation space, you have control towers. This is the control tower, which is coordinating with different pilots in the plane and so on. Similarly, take this another example where, you know, a one couple has so many kids and you want to enforce certain set of policies like you cannot go uh, out of home post 9 p.m. at night and certain sort of things, okay? That can be done here. You can automate ongoing policy management. You can create policy level summaries of your environment. Very good for quickly setting up the AWS environment. Now, you would be quizzed around this heavily in C03. Expect a lot of questions around control tower security best practices did c02 did not cover security best practices hey i did see questions around that so why the hell you are saying this is new this is not new but this certification c03 will delve deep into this security is of utmost importance for any customer okay and aws wants you to go deep and understand this because this is where most of the people who are certified and working on AWS projects, they kind of falter because they make mistakes, which is costing the client. So what AWS wants is they want their certified people to be pros understanding this concept. And the first important topic with best practices is infrastructure protection. You have 
built a castle or a fort or a palace okay and you have spent so heavily and you are just keeping one security guard here to not help people or bad players or thieves or robbers can come from here from here from the back door from the side door here etc so you got to spend a lot on infrastructure protection from the bad players and one thing that is important in order to do that is DDoS resiliency what it means is there is a service called AWS shield it gives you attack visibility for example thieves are coming from this direction so the security guards can be on their toes so shield is an important service always remember in c02 we did have questions around this around ddos and shield but c03 would go more deep now one great example of external threat and how to protect is you know scud missiles you, during like whenever there is a conflict between israel and palestine you see a lot of these pictures in the media these are scud missiles so if, if palestine fired some missiles a scud missiles fire and they nullify and neutralize that missile so that is called giving attack visibility and neutralizing the missile in the air itself now another important topic is identity access management these are the keys of your palace man you have built this palace you would have to put your keys in a secured position for that you will need policy types so least privilege we had a lot of questions on least privilege principles in c02 it will extend we had questions on mfa i did not see much of questions around temporary credentials there were some but not a lot and guardrails will go deep in c03 another important topic is detection it's just like your cctv cameras you put on your premises so when you talk about detection security hub and config these are the two services which you will have to polish and go deep what do they do they detect they identify so you have to understand how that works and they subscribe to my channel just kidding another important topic is resource configuration for example you must have seen these electric meters nowadays a lot of people are using smart meters but you have to safeguard this position so that nobody else plugs their wire here so now people in the developed countries may ask hey is it possible yes man in developing countries it is possible in india i've seen this happening though in the recent times i do not see a lot of these happening but in the old times this used to happen somebody used to plug their wire inside your meter and they used to pay zero dollars and you end up paying his money or his bills c03 will go deep on vulnerability patch management version management so it's like you know there are security softwares but you didn't as a customer you didn't apply the patch and hence the hack happened so it's very important if the software already provided a patch you perform an automated patch management okay and you have to identify resources with unacceptable vulnerabilities what it means is it has to be an automated process you have to understand which services we should use for this purpose now protection is the key why you see your army they are there to protect you they are one of the levers to protect you then you have the police force the cops a riot happens and these are the guys who are mobilized to protect you though now in some parts of india they have extra responsibilities of demolishing some people's homes without a court order or sometimes with some superior order but let's leave sarcasm behind protection levers in the aws world these are the services please focus on these services if possible take a screenshot of this you would be quizzing getting quizzed a lot on sso deep root user protection now in c02 i did see encryption in transit and at rest covered to a great extent but you will also be quizzed around access controls in c03 and data deletion protection okay so it's like you you got encryption in encryption in transit at rest this is just like your military you have root user protection this is just like your police force you got sso this is just like your border security force and so on so these are the protection levers in order to do that what protective services is in place protective services are just like your guards you know 
or gears, protection gears, you know, protection gears similar to these, protection gears similar to these. Okay. Take a screenshot of this. You got to go heavy on these services. WAF C02 had questions on WAF and Shield, but I did not see questions much around control tower, resource access manager, and access analyzer. So C03 will go deep on all of these topics. Now, recovery is another topic which is very important for C03. Now, suppose if someone is a, a victim of substance abuse, like drugs, alcohol, and they want to recover from this point in time. So what should they do? Hey, no worries. There are rehab centers. People can go there and recover. They are allowed to have a graceful fail, given multiple chances, and then they can recover from the rehab centers. Similar to that, we have recovery levers, like backup, always enable backups so that if you fall, you can stand up again. Always try to build high availability in your applications and systems. What it means is you do have graceful failovers. It's not like you fall down in a gutter and then it's not graceful because you know you'll have to clean up now. So you have to plan for graceful failovers, elastic scaling, and high availability. One more important thing for C03 is automated response and remediations. I did not see much of questions or any questions in C02 linked with this topic. So this kind of would be new and how it is done using security hub integration with event bridges, event bridge rules. So remember, you have to go deep into these topics and usage of Lambda to achieve these. Now C02 had a lot of questions around Lambda usage at different use case level, but not at this use case. So remember, Lambda can also be used for automated response and remediations. Now team, please hit the subscribe and the like button. I would be posting more such informative contents. We come to the fag end of this video. Remember, you can appear or start applying for this certification from 30th August 2022. But what I would recommend is take some time. Do not give yourself at least a month or two months so that some of the questions can be visible on, on the internet. The big question is, Will the old C02 questions still applicable? Yes, man. Yes, I'm telling you, old questions are still applicable because there are not a lot of changes. If you see th the topics at a high level are similar, only the depth changes. For example, they go low on these resilient architectures, high performing architectures, and they go very high on security. You see 24 to 30%, 6% addition. So you got to focus more on security app and architectures and that is what my video this video covered and then you have to go high on cost optimized architectures a lot of focus on reducing costs please make a note of these important dates the last day you can appear for saac02 is 29th and 30th onwards 30th is the first day you can appear for saac03 this brings us to the end of this part see you in the next video till then ciao